Jeff Santos Show on the Revolution Radio Network. Rebuilding America together. Now, here's Jeff. 33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show that you are tuned into. We are here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific time. And, of course, you can check us out on Revolution Radio Network. All of the interviews we've done, the likes of uh, Harvey K., Joe Sandberg, Jim Roosevelt, Ben Jealous today, and our next guest, the great Mark Taylor Canfield, the renaissance man of the Jeff Santo Show, will be available starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll be on a a roll at the 3 o'clock hour Eastern time. We'll be airing at 6 o'clock, the 4 o'clock at 7, etc., etc. It is uh, so great to be joined by our Renaissance man, uh, the great journalist, activist, and, of course, musician. It is so uh, so much fun to end our Fridays with our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield. Mark, happy Friday, sir. How are you today? And I, I hear that you are on the water again. You are so cool. What's going on, man? So I don't have my electric guitar with me because I'm on the boat and I still blame the, the FedEx driver <laughs> from Pakistan <laughs> who lost my electric guitar with the built in amp. But uh, I do have a harmonica. I am the owner of a Homer. And so uh, oh. I'll bring that out. And... Not to be confused with a Hummer. Okay. Yeah. No, actually, this uses no fossil fuel. It just uses your there breath, you and it works pretty well. Yeah, it's, it's cool. But yeah, I'm out on the water. It's a beautiful day in Seattle, and I, I just had to get away because this whole week, in the last couple of weeks, I've been so busy as a journalist, and there's been so many breaking stories. There's so much to talk about. you got our local billionaire going up in space and, you know, all this crazy stuff in the local elections. Oh, please. we got a... Did you see the uh, the uh, photographs going around? I, I might, maybe you were on one of the threads that uh, on Twitter uh, that Jeff Bezos and looking like Austin Powers, you know, going up to space there with his bald head. I thought that was the most appropriate uh, response. What a you know he had the audacity to talk about it. he wanted to thank all his employees because that's the money they made. I mean, come on! <laughs> I mean, this guy is so out of touch. It's pathetic. Yeah, and we have so many billionaires living here, and yet we have homeless encampments all over the city. So where's the go. money, folks? Where's mm-hmm. the reinvestment into our community? Apparently, it's going up in space. And I actually live near a place that's an exp- uh, experimental, uh, exploratory space launch corporation that sends payloads up for a lot of money. You have no idea how much it costs just to send some small satellite up. So I know that it costs a lot of money for him to do this. I guess Bezos... What is he going to do next by the baseball team or something? I mean, that's what billionaires do, right, is they just have to own sports yeah. teams. That would be the next thing. He already owns the Washington Post. So, I mean, I mean, we got Drew Carey, the comedian who's part owner of the Kraken, our NHL team. So where's your well, team? Cool. Maybe he could bring NBA back to Seattle. But I'd rather see him bring some affordable housing here and reinvest some of those major corporate taxes that Amazon is not paying back into the community. We've been fighting that for a long time here. So, yeah, it kind of... It's a big joke for us, too, here in Seattle. It's a like, big deal. Why don't you throw some money at the local community that you actually work and live in? That would be nice. Yeah, well, you know, he, he doesn't care about anybody but himself, and, and that was pr- pretty obvious at the press conference. Uh, talking with our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santo Show. You know, I, um, I caught an ad. I don't, I don't know who, who had it with these young kids uh, talking about it's time to do something on climate change, and we all know about uh, 2030, I think it's the, uh, uh, again, Amazon trying to pr- you know, prove that they're cool. But, you know, this is the same company. If it wasn't for Bernie Sanders and our good friend Ro Khanna and so forth, they wouldn't have been paying their people 15 bucks an hour, but and so forth. And, you know, this this is the sort of the game that they play. And this is corporate America at its worst. And, you know, they put a smile on the face. It's, you know, it's the uh, idea of the sunny face. Everybody smiles. Uh, in the meantime, you get the shaft when, the, when it comes time, time to the paycheck. And, and that's, that's uh, how these guys roll. Jeff, I have a different impression of what the Amazon logo actually represents, but I'll have to tell you that off the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that you and I may agree on that, but we can't say it. Well, I am interested that the Kraken started with their new team this week. It looked you know, pretty cool with all the basketball and football players, Marshawn Lynch and Lenny Wilkins there, introducing the new Kraken players. 
And you know, I'm I'm excited about the the opportunity to uh, can go ahead and go see a hockey game together, man. The Kraken. Sorry about the seaplane noise. There, there's actually a seaplane that's taking off near me. Um, there are a lot of seaplanes that fly out of Seattle. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think people are excited about the Kraken because it's something new. I mean, we aren't used to hockey except the totems here, which is ha- hasn't gotten a lot of attendance, but. The 21st century, so sunny weather and, you know, mild weather places like Seattle end up having hockey teams. The water never actually freezes here, so there's no opportunity to actually do any natural ice skating like my mother used to do in Michigan. But here, I think people are looking forward to it. It's something new, a new team to root for, a new uh, mascot in town, this sea serpent, you know. And so I think everybody's into it. Uh, We'll we'll see. I I hope that the ticket prices aren't going to price people out of the market because we need a place for working class people to go and enjoy sports. So let's hope that they, you know, have our fingers crossed on that one. But yeah, Drew Curry is an interesting guy. He's really funny. You know, even when he does press conferences about the team, it's great to see, uh, you know, Lenny Wilkins. Oh, my God, the iconic, historic player, coach of the Seattle Supersonics. And man, we do not forget here, Jeff, I know the rest of the country doesn't remember this, but we have not forgotten that in what 1978, we were the NBA champions with downtown Freddie Brown who could hit three-point shots. Oh, yeah, there. DJ, all and those guys. Yes. Jack Sickler, Jack Sickler, Twick Watts. Oh, my God. That, he's kind of small but really fast and really great defensive player. So, yeah, we, we've seen Lenny Wilkins, another really great um, player, Bill Russell. You know, we've seen some really great players and coaches come through Seattle. So, hey, Mr. Bezos, why don't you buy us a basketball team? There you go. Well, you know. Football ours. Yeah, well, you know, they, the Oklahoma folks stole it. But um, the fact is, is that uh, there's now a lot of rumors because you have an arena. It's now a lot, lot larger. You can seat more people. And therefore, oh, a lot of people may want to think that basketball is coming back to Seattle. And I've heard a lot of a lot of positive about that. So, you know, I think the Kraken may have started something really cool for the people when it comes to winter sports anyways. And uh, your Mariners are playing good ball. So, you know, all in all, you know, you can't complain if you are looking for uh, uh, a sports to do. I don't know what it's like out in Seattle now um, when t- people wearing masks and so forth. Uh, your friends down in California are issuing a mask. What is the latest there in Seattle and in Washington State as a whole? Well, I just got a, an opportunity to interview the captain of this wooden boat. Again, another tall ship with a tall mast sailing ship. And this captain, he's from Russia, actually, and they're sailing all the way around the world. And wow. you know, we're still going by Coast Guard restrictions on the water so if you're on a boat with more than a couple people you're you have to wear a mask so we had to wear a mask on board even when we were up on top outdoors i see people right now up on shore wearing masks and they're outdoors so even the governor would say it's camilla jayapal said hey if you're outdoors and you've been vaccinated don't worry about the mask but people here are still kind of cautious so it's still here the clubs are the music clubs are just reopening but they're saying that, you know, if you can't show proof of vaccination or a negative test. So, you know, that's where we're at in Seattle. People are kind of, you know, um, trying to, to make decisions for themselves. Businesses are, and music clubs are trying to make decisions for themselves just because, you know, you know there's still people that are potential spreaders. So, so there you go. That's the way it is. I'm wearing my mask whenever I'm in public, pretty much around other people. And buses, you have to have a mask. You can't get on a King County Metro bus. Unless you have one, and if you don't have one, then the bus driver will supply you with one. So there you go. They have surgical masks on all the buses. So that's still happening. So that's where we're at. We're playing it cautious. Uh, the governor has lifted most of the restrictions, but the private businesses and, you know, people in their own personal lives are making their own decisions about that. Hey, by the way, before I forget, uh, you know, we've been talking all day with uh, our great group of contributors on the uh, rail uh, situation, and they're taking out of the uh, infrastructure bill, uh, particularly the bipartisan one, this whole concept of reducing the the transit the mass transit the subways and uh, and buses and so forth uh, and just want to give roads and bridges which you know is is outrageous but that's you know how the democrats get rolled every time by the republicans so i'm wondering can you get to a kraken game you know via rail in uh, in your great city of Seattle did they have a a rail stop there i know you guys have some you know, rail, but not 
extensive and I know there's obviously the the monorail that was there for you know I guess going back to the World's Fair um, what what is the situation now that you can you know go to a hockey game there uh, not far from the uh, uh, the Space Needle well, I'll answer that in a second but I can't tell you you know I don't know what it's like in Boston right now but oh it's so nice out on the water right now it's a beautiful beautiful day in Seattle not too hot just nice breeze to cool you down in the sun and I just saw this big ship go by. It was actually the fire boat, and they said it's spraying, shooting off their um, fire hoses. Uh, just, I guess they're testing them out or whatever. So there was no fire or anything. They were just, the fire boat was out here. And you see the firemen down here, too, training. They actually have some scuba divers on the fire department for rescues and stuff. And so they were down here scubaing in the water and stuff. So I was just going to ask you about the rail. Can you take a, a, a is there oh, such yeah. a thing as light rail to the, uh, to the now to the Kraken at the uh, new arena or the key arena? Well, yes, you can. And, it's, you know, that's one of the concerns. Even though my band, as it stands, we may not actually start playing out until, you know, winter. But, oh, I have a big boat coming out. Wait, hold on. I have to get out of the way. Well, this is live radio, yeah, folks, have- for sure. Mark is on the waterfront, so... Uh, be aware. I think I know where he's going to dock, so I'm just going to head south, and then he can make his decision how he wants to deal with it. But we do have a, a light rail system now in Seattle. It took a long time. We're way behind. Uh, we'll probably never catch up with BART, that great system down in San Francisco where the trains and the buses are all coordinated. But you can get to SeaTac Airport from downtown Seattle on a, a bus now or, and a train. And actually, that's good because the Uber prices have gone way up. My friend who's a flight attendant who's always traveling says that Uber is now charging an inordinate amount of money down here to get to the airport. So we do have some light rail. It does go into the Soto district, does come into the near at least the Space Needle and Seattle Center where the Kraken will be playing at Key Arena, where I saw Peter Gabriel. That was so cool. But... We are, yeah, I mean, there is some light rail. We just voted down multiple proposals in the past, which was kind of stupid, but Seattle always wanted to be, yeah, this ship is an Argosy cruise ship by the time, by the way, it's called the Good Time 3, so I knew I should get out of the way because they dock right here near near me, back near the Bill Gates' heliport um, boat. Oh, boy. um, Wild Bill. It's better than it used to be. There is light rail on Capitol Hill now, so you can get around pretty quickly. Seattle has never been a big city um, geographically because we're stuck in between Elliott Bay and Lake Washington, so it's a, a narrow strip of land. But people can get around by foot pretty quickly here. So if you take a light rail from the airport into downtown, you could literally walk or take a quick bus or, or taxi or Uber into the Space Needle pretty easily. So, yeah, we, it's better, Jeff, but we still need to catch up. Um, we still need more light rail. I do think that that is one of the priorities. Of course, the idea of extending the monorail kind of petered out at one point when Grant, the guy that was running for city council, didn't win. So nobody's brought up expanding the monorail, which would be kind of cool because that's a great way to get around town. But I think there's a big commitment to mass transit here, and there's a commitment to trying to keep it inexpensive for working people and poor folks who can't afford you know, to take a cab. And just a warning to people who come to Seattle, you can't hail cabs here. It's all done through dispatchers, so you've got to call or contact them online in order to how, get a ride. How much is Uber taking over the cab industry there? Well, I've taken a cab to SeaTac uh, one time when I was late for a trip to New York, and it cost me, I don't know, 35 bucks, maybe 40 bucks at the most, and Uber is more up to their getting more expensive, at least 60 from from one quote I heard, so almost double uh, what I've what I would pay a yellow cab. People forget that there are actually cab companies around the, the cities in the United States and it's called Yellow Cab and Orange Cab. And, you know, right, right, still exactly. There, and we still have those old, you know, storefront buildings where people are actually sitting there waiting to answer the phone. So, you know, you can call a cab. They also line up at the hotels around here late at night so you can just walk out of your hotel and get one right, right out front. But you can't hail them. You can't, you know, wave at them and expect them to stop for you because they only go out uh, when they know that there's someone to pick up, they're not roving around town. So that's the way it is. It's it's um and they're and they're pretty good. They're not you know usually like they usually don't try to stiff tourists you know by saying oh you want to go to downtown Seattle well that'll take at least an hour you know <laughs> and and you're you know like you know 20 minutes away. Uh, I have run into that in other cities, <laughs> but I've never seen that here. The cab drivers are pretty honest and you know, they're pretty well regulated. So 
Um, don't forget the cabbies. They're working hard and trying to make some money, too. A lot of them are immigrants to this country, and they're, they're just trying to get by. So don't forget to, to tip them well. And also the local, remember to um, bus your bartender and tip your tables. No, wait, the other way around. No, it's, yeah, bu- uh, bus uh, your tables and tip your bartender because people work hard in Seattle, and even at minimum wage, the rents are so expensive here that nobody, you know, unless you have a really good pro- uh, professional job, is doing great. You know, people are struggling to get by. So remember your waiter and waitress, they work really hard for that money, and um, they are not getting paid a huge um, salary. So if, if, if you like what they, what they offer you, then, you know, give them a kickback. It's only, it's good for the community. It's good for them. And it's good ultimately for the landlords because then they can rent, pay their rent, for God's sake. So there you go. Yeah, for sure. Uh, talking with our great friend uh, Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santos Show. Uh, so what is, what is happening uh, in the mayor's race? What's the latest there? Well, we have the, the field has narrowed a bit. So some of the folks like Omari Tahir Garrett, who is a longtime African-American activist in this town who was tear gassed in you know, occupying the African-American Heritage Museum, uh, he... Uh, I, I don't think he's still running, at least, you know, he's, I haven't seen him do any public appearances. Uh, Colleen Echohawk, the big story here is that Colleen Echohawk, a member of the Pawnee Nation, uh, she uh, didn't get Camilla Jayapal's endorsement. I thought that she was the front runner and she seemed the most organized and came out of the starting gate ahead of everyone else. But it, it was Lorena Gonzalez, uh, the president of the Seattle City Council, who got Camilla's endorsement. And we also have Bruce Harrell, who's the former president of the city council, a black man also running for office um, as mayor. So we have a good slate of candidates, and they're all committed to police reform. Um, but Pramila Jayapal decided to um, endorse Lorena Gonzalez. So it's a huge endorsement. It's a huge boon to her campaign. I'm sure it will help her with fundraising and many other things. She um, and Pramila, I'm going to assume, have worked together in the past, given that Lorena has been the president of the Seattle City Council. And we have a city council in Seattle that is more like maybe your state legislature. It's been accused of being way too activist, and they've also been accused of being, you know, creating a nanny state here. Well, we just uh, lost our good friend uh, Mark Taylor Canfield there on the uh, on the waters. Uh, hopefully he can uh, give us a, uh, a shout back. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, hear from what our good friend John uh, has to say about uh, uh, the great city of Seattle and, and, uh, and rail in his own right. Uh, actually, let's, uh, let's bring Mark back uh, for a second. We'll get John in a minute, too. Uh, I think this is Mark. Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I was just saying that, um, that um, Pramila Jayapal and, and Lorena Gonzalez are probably uh, political partners in a way because our Seattle City Council is so activist-oriented. And so they're passing wide sweeping measures that are kind of setting precedent across the country. And so you'll see maybe our congresswoman um, consulting with the city council here, which is maybe unusual in other cities. I don't know, but it's probably one of the reasons uh, why she endorsed Pramila Diapol. She's familiar with, uh, or why she, Pramila Diapol endorsed Lorena Gonzalez, because she's familiar with Lorena. They've worked together before. Well, I tell you, it's um, it's going to be interesting to see how how that whole thing works uh, because you know we get the endorsement of of a, of a big name person like that uh, that could go a long way, or it could it could sort of be one of these things where somebody decides to outwork Miss Gonzalez, even though she gets the big endorsement. Uh, you know, she doesn't have the people on the ground. Um, it, it is Miss um, Echo Hawk the one with the great field operation, or is there anyone there yeah. that has that? Yes, um, Colleen Echohawk uh, had 40 community meetings and lobbied all of us who hold these democracy vouchers, every registered voter in the city of Seattle where we have publicly funded um, city elections are given democracy vouchers. So the candidates have to lobby us in order and, and schmooze us to get that um, money. Uh, they can't rely on big corporate donors. So she's been really good at that. She has a very, Colleen Echohawk has a very comprehensive plan to address homelessness, which homelessness and police reform are the two biggest issues in Seattle. Um, we had massive protests all year last year, uh, major Black Lives Matter protests against racism and, and uh, police brutality in the Seattle Police Department. Um, they got kicked out of, their, their police bill got kicked out of the King County Labor Council. There's major lawsuits and, you know, I think, you know, thousands of complaints that were filed against the police department. So that's another issue. I can tell you this, that it'll, I would, 
I would not be surprised if the next mayor of Seattle is a a, a woman of color. That look like looks like what it's coming down to to me, and I think that's a good thing for the city. Yeah, well, you be you will be joining, um, you know, uh, Boston, and and uh, of course uh, you have uh, Eric Adams is uh, African American male um, in New York, so it, it seems. You know, a lot of the, the "quote unquote" progressive coastal cities are, are kind of moving in that direction. And you know, it's it's also fascinating to see um, our, our good friend Ali Veshi of uh, MSNBC, who was in Portland uh, just an hour or two south of you, and uh, you know, talking about all the issues there. One of the things, Mark, and I, I think that's fascinating is that both of both Portland and Seattle have great music scenes. Of course, we talked about what it is there. But these are cities that kind of, um, you know, that may be rivals in some ways, but for the most part, they, they kind of are, are, are glue cities to the Pacific Northwest. Tell me about that before we roll. Definitely rivals in sports and soccer, definitely rivals. Um, but uh, also, uh, Nicholas Kristoff, New York Times columnist and author of the book Tightrope with his wife, show Dewey, um, is running for governor in Oregon. And so there you go. You have a journalist running for governor there, which could be very interesting. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, in, in this part of the country, I actually infiltrated a Republican um, community meeting one time um, in California, and they said that in um, the Northwest, a female running on the Democratic ticket is automatically 20 points ahead of any male Republican. So they've kind of given up in some ways on the governorship here and the Congress and um, um, the Senate. So I understand that we have a, a female Senate delegation, right? And so that's a, I've been a long time trend in Seattle, in this district, where Pramila Jayapal is our congresswoman, and across the western part of the state. So nothing new to us having, you know, we just, we have Jenny Durkin, former U.S. attorney, as our mayor. Um, not the most popular mayor at the moment, but. Um, so it's, we're very familiar with, you know, and also being gay is not a big deal. She's she's also a gay woman. Um, a former mayor, Murray, was also gay. So that is also um, not even really a political issue here. So people get elected because they um, are seen as activists. The problem is that a lot of times once they get elected, they become kind of sellouts to the corporate uh, entities here who are huge, some of the biggest in the world, the biggest, most richest people in the world, and also... Um, to the real estate industry, which, you know, as I look out, I'm not far outside of Seattle, and I can see the skyline. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cranes just within one small area of downtown. So that's Seattle. Uh, the official bird is the construction crane. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was going to say. You guys just see me build, 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 all for those yuppies who work in Amazon. Uh, hey, yeah. it's uh, always great uh, chatting with you, uh, Mark. Uh, be cool and uh, uh, enjoy your uh, your boat ride there. Um, I tell you, you get the life. Uh, have a great weekend, man. Thank you, and enjoy your weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Send the band we out there playing again. Woo-hoo. There you go. Get back to the folks and go and enjoy uh, Mr. Mark uh, and uh, the Showbox and some of the other great places in Seattle, WA, if you're there. Hey, I want to thank uh, Ron Carter for producing this broadcast. Thank you for tuning in, folks, calling in and uh, and listening to this uh, program. We appreciate you more than you can imagine. Uh, I want to uh, also tell you that, um, again, we'll have some big names next week. Uh, Mike Dukakis uh, will speak to uh, our good friends. Uh, ben Jealous again, and um, and many others too. Uh, Larry Cohen of Our Revolution. Keep on fighting, folks. My name is Jeff Santos. Have a great weekend. And right now, it is my time to say I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs>